Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we're gonna to be harvesting a ton of cut flowers. Okay, we're gonna start by filling up a few buckets over here. And I've just got a couple of buckets that I've picked up from the hardware store over the years. One has a handle, one's broken, <laughs> so it doesn't. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that filled up. I still have my um, garden feeder on here. This is the feeder that I use to do fish emulsion um, as my fertilizer for my plants so I'm not gonna take it off <laughs> I'm not filling the buckets up all the way with water only about a third of the way so they're not too heavy all right and then I'm also going to be utilizing just a good pair of pruning shears I don't take as good a care as I should <laughs> of mine but they work just fine enough Okay, over here I am harvesting a celosia and it's called Pink Flamingo and it's from Florette. I did grow this from seed. And it started off mostly white as it's aged out a little bit. It's gotten a little bit more pink um, on the tips of them. Really, really pretty. I'm gonna be harvesting this whole area down to the ground because I actually have a big project starting this weekend um, in this section right here. This section is going to be turned into mostly perennials and it's kind of a beautiful focal point tree that I'll be showing you guys this weekend. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do a nice cut. I'm just gonna do cut to size right now on this. So I'm cutting about a couple of feet long. Um, on these and then once I've harvested all the flowers that I want from here I'm going to cut the stems all the way down to the base just to clear out this area for the new project this weekend This um, Flower did really really well with hot weather. We are on the side garden that gets full west sun West facing sun for like eight hours. So definitely not a small amount of time. And Celosia loves the heat. So this did wonderful. <clears throat> I still have a lot of seeds that I'll be planting of this next year. Okay, now that I have harvested all of that, I am just gonna take these stems all the way to the ground. I'm gonna leave the um, roots in there. They'll rot and then add nutrients to the ground. I'm really excited about what I'm gonna be doing over here. This area is a kind of a tough area for cut flowers because of how much sun it gets. So I'm kind of excited to get this changed out to something else. I think it'll be really fun. Okay, the next one I'm gonna be harvesting are, um, these are believe were supposed to be variegated coxcomb. 
don't really see a lot of variation variegation regarding it. The um, stems did grow very unique in that they're more flat than round. So kind of different. Take a look at this. Isn't that cool? I mean, look how thin it is. And then you turn to the side. And I'll give you a close up of all the flowers once I've got them harvested. tag and this is actually supposed to this is a mix from Johnny's and it's called fruit punch so it's supposed to be a bunch of different kind of fruity colors that makes more sense because I was thinking where's the variegation on here but yes this one is called Celosia fruit punch and it was grown from seed from Johnny's Johnny seeds I don't have tons of it over here. I think if I had allowed these to go longer, I would have gotten much bigger blooms, but truthfully, it's time to get going. Look at the way the stem twists. Not fascinating? It's super pretty. Different. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and take these stems all the way to the ground as well. Y'all look how thick this stem is. That's insane. Yeah, if I had been able to let these go another three to four weeks, which I still have that much time in my um, gardening, um, in my growing time, they would have been big time producers. But it's just, I've got, stuff that needs to get into the ground here. All right, the color isn't as intense as I would like, but still very, very pretty. I like it. I also really like the color of the stems. Very pretty. Okay, so next we're going to shift over to this Celosia, and this is like a dark pink coxcomb, and it's kind of got that brain look to it, which is very cool. This is voluntary from last year. Um, I don't know the particular name on it, but it is absolutely beautiful. some more volunteers next year from this because a lot of these have already started going to seed. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. You can see all the little black seeds. Yeah. This is already starting to go seed. So I might get some volunteers from this next year, which will be interesting since this whole area is going to be um, mostly perennials. But I'm not gonna lie, it'd be kind of cool to see some of this like bold color celosia pop up.
Very pretty color. Love the brain look on them. Looks really good. So fun. I do hope it reseeds next year. Okay, and I had one variegated coxcomb. You can see the striations of the white, the yellow, and the pink in there. Super pretty. This is a volunteer from last year. I grew this here last year. Okay, and these seeds, these might be, I think these are um, Pro Cut Plum. And a lot of these have are, are already past their prime. Um, so they're not actually going into the bucket, but they do still need to be harvested. Um, just so, to clear out the area. So let me get some of these cleared out and then I'll show you some of the blooms that are still good. Here's one of the blooms, still good. So pretty. I've had a lot more luck with Pro Cut this last year. Pro cut plum. They're kind of smaller. I still think they look really pretty. And lastly, this is a volunteer sunflower. So I don't know the variety, but it's still beautiful in really great shape. And this is a branching sunflower. So instead of just one bloom, you can see it branches off into several. I'm a huge fan of branching sunflowers. I know a lot of people are not, but I love it. Right, look how pretty. This is all off of one stem. Love it. Okay, we got all this area cleared out. That's really nice. Obviously, I've got to do some weeding before my project, but still very excited, very happy with these seeds that I just kind of threw in at the last minute. And I have an entire bucket of gorgeousness. And all of these, I believe I started these in mid-July. So, absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's go check out a few more areas to harvest. Okay, these over here are Meteor Showers Verbena and these self-seeded um, from actually a couple of seasons ago, interestingly enough. So I wanted to harvest some of these so that it will continue producing. A lot of flowers are cut and come again. The celosia that I was harvesting earlier is cut and come again. The um, sunflowers are not. The sunflowers I was just harvesting, they're not cut and come again. This stuff, this meteor showers verbena, is cut and come again. So you cut it 
and it will produce more flowers. And I'm just cutting this right above a set of leaves. And wherever two leaves meet, it will produce some more. I'm not going to take all of it, but I am going to take a good amount because, like I said, I want it to produce more and continue producing until my um, first freeze. My first freeze is in November. Uh, November 22nd is the estimated date or whatever. I find that our first, I guess that's frost technically, but I find that as of late, the last few years, it's usually a couple of weeks later than that. pretty very whimsical look love it doesn't have much of a smell my guess is that it would dry really well though I've never done that but really really pretty okay over here we have canary bird zinnias and these are beautiful bright yellow color really really fun I'm harvesting them and cutting them directly above a set of two leaves. So where two leaves come together on the stem, I'm going to cut right above that. And that will force the plant to produce another flower or two right where those leaves meet on the stem. Looks like we have a lot of single zinnias and a lot of double zinnias on this. I was reading an article the other day that said you could tell which is a double zinnia, which is a single zinnia by the shape of the seed. And if it's flat and thin, like really flat looking, it's going to be, if the seed is really flat, it's going to be a single. If the seed is long and thin, like really skinny, it is going to be a double. Not sure if that's the case. It'd be a cool experiment to try. I am harvesting all of these. And I will get a whole nother round. I already see one, two, three, four, five, five blooms, six blooms. You're also going to laugh. I'm actually starting to see some of my dahlias get some uh, buds on them. Just shocking if you know how bad my dahlia situation was this last year. So over here we have some queen line zinnias in red. These are red more towards the right and then the queen line blush is towards the left. That is all the queen line red harvested. Starting to get really humid out here, y'all. <laughs> Just a few more and then stop for the day. Okay, and then this next set over here is the queen line blush. I actually really been enjoying them. The blooms are more petite than I thought they would be. But um, 
so very pretty, delicate, very whimsical kind of feeling. Um, they have shades of light pink, green, yellow in them. It's, it's just, it's been a really fun bloom. We'll leave that guy. Don't have as much of them to harvest. We'll say I'm starting to see some powdery mildew, which is typical of this time of year for my zinnias. So just a few of the queen lime blush. Pretty. Okay, and this is a new to me kind of filler greenery. This is called Cress. Um, I think it's Dragon Cress. What's the name of it? Let me see if I've got my tag over here. Yes, Cress. It's called Cre Green Dragon. Very cool whimsical. I just literally tossed the seeds out here. I do not believe this is cut and come again, but this is my first time growing it, so I'm not, I'm not real sure. I'm just going to take some of the larger ones. I actually think some of them look like they're trying to go to seed, which would be pretty cool. These are neat. I'm excited to try these. This is from Florette. green dragon very cool okay and I'm also going to start taking some of this amaranthus if you guys remember it had a bad bout of spider mites in July and I cut it back really hard a lot of y'all were super nervous but sometimes cutting a plant back is super helpful a lot of this is starting to come over into the yard space. And this is um, a red spike amaranthus. And it reseeds itself every year. Fortunately, this will be its last year here because this is um, an area where all of the chrysanthemums that I ordered, they're all going to be going in here. Super pretty. Very fall love the color of it okay i have two <laughs> beautiful buckets absolutely glorious love them this is the queen lime red zinnia canary bird yellow this is the green dragon crest red spike amaranthus Let's see if i can get all of these meteor showers verbena this is just a traditional purple prince zinnia this was a volunteer branching zinnia. These are all of the Flamingo Celosia, a volunteer Celosia, Plum Cut, uh, Pro Cut, let's see, Plum Pro Cut Sunflowers. Yeah, super pretty, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this today. Whew, it is definitely humid. I'm heading in, I'm gonna watch a webinar um, try to learn some more stuff so I can teach you guys some more things. I hope you guys enjoy just watching me harvest. Um, a lot of people have commented about how they don't ever get the opportunity to watch me actually harvest any flowers. And so um, this time of year, everything's coming back to life. It survived the crazy heat of our summer. And now I'm being rewarded for my work during the summer, my trying to keep everything just barely alive, not flourishing, definitely not flourishing during the summer just keeping it enough alive that it could come back now in these cooler tips. So as always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.